Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today it's all about fried cheese. We're gonna do all kinds of crazy ideas. You guys stay tuned. All right, here we go. Hey, it's all about doing something different. So we all know the traditional fried mozzarella stick. And that's exactly what I was going to do today. But over the last couple of months before we filmed this video, I've been trying to say, how, how can you do something different? Look what we got. Fresh mozzarella cheese with prosciutto and basil roll. It's already done for you. We're going to slice it thin. Then we're going to bread them up, fry them in some oil. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. But if that wasn't enough, we're at Costco and I thought, holy cow. Now we got mozzarella sticks wrapped in different types of Italian meats. So we're gonna do the exact same thing and see how great this turns out. You guys ready? Yep, I'm so excited. All right, first thing we're gonna do is get several of them done, show you guys the process. I'm gonna to continue to do the rest. Now the difference is after these are done, okay, I'm gonna freeze them for about 45 minutes to an hour. My flat top's not on or anything like that. So it's very important for you guys to freeze these. If not, that cheese is just too warm and it's gonna explode while frying, okay? So let's get started. Let's see what we got here. Okay, I've taken the uh, mozzarella out of the package. So this is my idea. Basically, a nice slice. I don't know, maybe, let's see what we get here. About that thick. You definitely want some goo, you want some pull. All right, now that I've cut them, so this is the idea. Look at all that meat and basil wrapped on the inside. You guys can see the basil right there. See that? God, this is gonna be, I, I think it's gonna be fantastic. I've never done it, but the idea to me is just out freaking standing. So I'm gonna get these set to the side. Here we go. We got our three little boxes here of the just miscellaneous meats and cheeses. Really quick, flour, just enough to dredge on the dry, okay? I've got three eggs. Come back over here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of Parmesan. Really not needed, but I think it adds just a little bit to it. Italian flavored breadcrumbs. Just eyeballing everything. Maybe about equal parts of Italian breadcrumbs. And then we're going in with the panko breadcrumbs. I just think the crispiness is unmatched when you're talking about frying. Unmatched. So that should be good. So the idea is just flour, egg wash, try to use different hands or different methods so your fingers don't get uh, Hulk size. Now the, the trick that I found in frying anything, especially like this, is double dredging it. So we're going right back into the egg. And then right back into there. Okay, so there's one. Look at there. Good. I'm excited about this, honey. I know. I, <laughs> this is a good idea. <laughs> the, I love being creative. This is what it's all about. All right. A little egg. Same thing. We're going to double dredge it. I'm going to get all these knocked out. And then... Once we're done, we're gonna go ahead and freeze them. Like I said, we're aiming for about 45 minutes. Double dredge them. This is perfect for parties. Dang, big games coming up. No matter what big game it is. Could there's you, always something coming up. Could you freeze them for longer than 45 minutes? I like, think you could actually freeze these until uh, until you use them. Like you could, so you could like I think do you, this part like the day before? Don't kill me if I'm wrong. I think you could do it a week before. Once it's frozen, it's frozen. This stuff has not been frozen before, so you know the, the philosophy, you never refreeze something. But since it's just refrigerated, I would just go ahead and do them just like this and freeze them. And then a couple days later, three or four days later, bring them back out. There's nothing wrong with it, okay? So I'm gonna get these knocked out. We're gonna get them in the freezer. And then once we get back, we're gonna start the frying process. All right, guys, it's been about an hour. We're back at it. We got our oil preheating on our flat top. Just before we get started, Please do not click off of this. Please do not fast forward. I think before this video needs to go forward, the whole point of making this video was not even fried mozzarella. The whole point of this video is how to fry on a griddle. Should you fry on a griddle? Let me first and foremost say this. I've got mad respect for anybody that does content, point blank period. 
I've got mad respect that once you've been in somebody's shoes, you understand the the struggles, the realization of stuff they go through, you know, before the camera, after the camera, whatever. I thought, it, to me, it's a lot harder than what I ever expected. I see people deep frying on the griddle and it is literally irking me to the core. Has this ever happened? I don't know, but I do know that being in a culinary background, I have seen some crazy <laughs> happen. I've just seen it. In the Navy, a young girl, a sailor, was taking out a sheet tray of um, a chicken that had been in the oven about 400. And that time we're serving about like 70 trays of full sheet pans of like this loaded chicken. We were out at sea, so we're full uh, staffed. Without hesitation, without thinking, it was just a natural thing. She was shorter than the oven. We have double stacked ovens. She pulled the tray out. I was right there next to her. And for some reason, she wanted to set it on her shoulder because I was too heavy. But you got to remember, when you're dealing with chicken, thighs, quarters, legs, all that oil and all that grease came right down the sheet pan, hit her right in the ear, right on the side of the face, right down the shoulder, right down her side. Nothing we could do about it. It just happened so fast. Why do I mention that? Let's go over here. Really quickly, I just want to give my personal opinion about flat top uh, frying. I've seen people take these out, put oil in them, and fry with them. I can understand why they would want to do it because this is thin, which means the heat would penetrate this extremely well. Although I understand the idea, I completely oppose it 110%, especially if you're a beginner at the flat top level. Let's just say this was on the flat top grill, okay? This is extremely flexible. So once this thing is full of oil, if you've ever dealt with a smoker, you know once it gets heavy, even if the oil's cooled, cooled down, this thing can bend and all that stuff, it could spill, it's not really good. What if you got it on the flat top grill and you're not paying attention, and you take metal tongs or something like that, and you accidentally poke a hole. You're not paying attention, you walk away, you start doing something else. My worry, and I, I say this with utmost respect, your grease trap is only so big, okay? If an oak happens and all of a sudden your flat top grill starts oozing oil and you can't stop it, you're not going to be able to reach down at 350 degree oil to pick this up and take the oil out of it. Okay. It's not going to happen. So now all of a sudden you've got to determine what you're going to do with the oil leaking from here. Your grease trap is not going to be able to sustain all that oil that can leak from here. If it happens. The second thing is we're, we're talking about open flames. Okay. With the, with the camp chef, our grease trap is in the front. Now, all of a sudden, you've got excess amount of grease that the grease trap can only funnel down into a small drain. And you guys have told me that your grease drain a lot of times clogs up. So now I can only imagine that much oil coming to the front and nowhere to go, and you're standing right here. And last and not least, on the negative side, is the fact that once frozen stuff goes in this, this isn't like our stove where we could just crank it up on high and adjust the temperature with flat top, uh, with a uh, with deep frying. It's going to take a while for this oil to come back up. So you can't overload this oil. That's actually why I've got two today and not just one because I know what's going to happen. It's going to drop the oil temp and it's going to fight like crazy to get back up there. But we're going to do it today. Okay. Oh, really quick on the negative side or positive side, whichever you want to look at it. That's why I love cast iron. Before we even started with flat top grilling, cast iron was a really big part of my life. That's one reason why I like it. It retains a lot of heat. It's a lot stiffer. It's got pore spouts. A lot of them have pore spouts. It's a lot easier to transfer the oil after you're done to something else than it would be the thin aluminum pan, okay? So just keep that in mind. So with all that being said, thank you for taking your time to, to see that. I hope you guys forward it to somebody, especially that's new to flat top grilling or anybody that's had a disaster or an oh crap. So let's get back to what we're starting for or what we started talking about, which was fried mozzarella cheese. You guys ready? All right, here's a couple of thermometers that we've got going. This is our Insta read, so it's going to shoot up a little bit. Hovering about 375 probably. Could be a little higher, 380. Perfect, okay. Now this is our Insta thermometer. Now my theory is the reason why the temperature is so different because this is shooting straight through the oil. I have seen people before shoot the oil like this. Well, if your oil is thin, it's going to go right to the bottom of, the, of the, the base that it's on. You can't actually tell the oil temperature with this. So I, I've seen it happen. And, that, and then we got our uh, thermometer here. So you can tell it's about, what is it, about 360, 365. All right, so this is the deal. 
we're going straight into it. Okay, you ready? Probably that's enough of me talking. Remember, these have been frozen for an hour. And these, there are different uh, meats on them, but I just did four each to give it a variety just to see what happens. No clue which one's which. I don't think it really matters. All right, really quick. So there's a lot of times that we play on the flat top grill without you guys even seeing. So earlier today, we did this awesome potato recipe that we cannot wait to show you guys. And then my wife was like, uh, well, what about doing like potato chips? I know these look burnt, but honestly, I'm just playing around with them. I'm just seeing how crispy they go, what temperatures to play around with. But this is kind of like behind the scenes that you guys never see. So if you guys see these on the flat top, this is just what it is. Just playing around potatoes. They look good though. They were good. Fresh potato chips. Yeah. Yeah. Put a little ranch dressing, blue cheese, buffalo sauce on those. All right. Like I said, I thought that, that once putting it in here, it's going to drop the oil. So now we're shooting about 330, which is not bad. I allowed the oil to come up past 350 to about 380, 390. And the whole point was I was anticipating that drop. I have had this preheated on low for a very long time. Once I put the oil in there, I gave it about 10 more minutes and then I cranked it up to medium. Uh, so this side right here is on medium right here, just because of uh, just knowing that the amount of temperature loss, this is shooting right now at like 300. You guys see that? And I knew that was anticipated. So you're looking almost at an 80 degree drop. Um, the point is about heat, uh, is it worth it? I honestly do not think so. I, if you're deep frying on a flat top griddle, there's got to be other ways. It would be, be you'd be better off to buy one of those, uh, what do you call it, honey? One of those square things that you plug in. Like uh, a hot plate? Like a hot plate for outside. It's very, uh, way much better. I, I strongly would recommend not even deep frying on a flat top griddle, but if we're going to do it, you might as well make some of the best damn things you've ever eaten. Amen to that. Oh, right here really quick. I've had some marinara warming up on the griddle. Right there with a lid on it. We're gonna put that as a dipping sauce. You guys, somebody mentioned, uh, my wife mentioned ranch. Oh, these are gonna be good, honey. So one one reason why people like to deep fry outside though is because it doesn't sink up the whole house. Which is true. Now, I'm not against deep frying on the outside of the house. Even if you had, I, I would be more inclined if you, one of the very few times I've ever said to go to a smaller griddle. In my mind, a smaller griddle would actually be better for this. But in all honesty, I still don't think it's good enough. Oh, these are gonna be good, honey. <laughs> Ooh, Golly, they look crispy. Add a little Parmesan cheese. Look, I just fried these until they're golden brown. Didn't take long at all. I just want to reiterate something that I said earlier. I'm not discouraging anybody from doing what they want to do. I'm only trying to give you both sides of the story. And that's been my whole goal since we started this channel was just come to you 100% honest. So if you want to deep fry, deep fry. If you want to find a different method, find a different method. But I'm telling you one thing. We had one of these jokers off camera while they're cooling down because I could not stand up. I'm telling you right now, home, home freaking run, son. I'm telling you. All right, let's go. Take one of these bad boy jokers right here. Lord knows what's in it. Let's see what happens. I'm telling you, the saltiness, the meat is literally the game changer. I can't believe people <sighs> don't do this more often. Or haven't even thought about it or done it. Maybe they thought about it. Maybe they've done it. I don't know. <sighs> <laughs> hey, guys. Thanks for the ride. Thanks for the journey. Thanks for watching. Remember... You can fry anything from this point. This was just an idea. Whatever you want to fry. Country fried steaks, donuts, you name it. You guys do it. Just make sure you tag me so we can see it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends, deep fry something.
because these bad boys are on point. Mm. Mm. 